Alright, so in this video, I want to share with you the advantages of having a master's degree. But before I begin, I'm going to share with you some personal background about myself. So I currently possess a bachelor's in chemistry, and I switched on over and acquired my master's in environmental engineering. Personally, I made the switch because I didn't really want to be stuck in a lab working for some big pharmaceutical company. I wanted to switch and help the environment more, so it is because of like the environment, the drought, climate change, and everything that made me switch on over. I could not go back and like get a second bachelor's, and then it was sort of too late for me to get a minor's. So I switched on over to like the environment side of the science. I also made the switch because I had a feeling that this higher education should be like an initial investment for me. And if you're watching this video, you're probably wondering whether or not you should get a master's too. So overall, I had that mindset of this being a good investment for me in the future because of you know the list that I'll eventually show you in this video. And so this list will just be the advantages of having a master's degree. But that being said, that doesn't mean that you should always just get a master's in any field. Still be in a field that is actually productive, you know, so I got my master's in environmental engineering. So engineering is still a relevant field. It's still typically a high paying prestigious job title to have. Getting a master's in like some science field or some other high demand field is good. But that doesn't mean that you should always get a master's in everything. So for example, you shouldn't get and spend like $20,000 on getting a master's for like uh, underwater basket weaving or something like that. So for the most part, just make sure that you're picking a field that is still relevant and in high demand if you're worried about whether or not you're going to be spending all this money and all this time to get some degree that's going to be pointless. So that was just a rant. Pretty much I'm just getting upset because people spend so much time and so much money getting a master's just because of that title, having a master's, but they'll all of a sudden get some high benefit just because they have a master's. That's not always the case, but I'm just going to go into the video. I'll talk about the disadvantages in a separate video. So let's just get started. So the first advantage of getting a master's is typically a higher pay potential. For the most part, it's sort of common sense to know that the more educated you are, the more skilled and the more valuable you are as a person. So companies will look into that and say, oh, this guy can do a lot more, he's learned a lot more, he went to school a lot more, so he could probably give a lot more to this company. And personally, most people that I know who are like managers or supervisors, they have their masters. Or they went on to get like their professional engineering license or other certifications to prove that they are worthy of being in a supervisory role. And for the most part, if you're in like a super high responsibility position, you typically have to have like more stress, more responsibilities, and so that results to more higher pay. And so yes, me getting my master's was because I firmly believe that having my master's would put me in a higher pay scale than the rest of my other peers who just got their bachelor's. The next advantage is that there is higher prestige. So in a way, this is not really going to affect your pay scale so much. It's more of like an ego boost. So people who just graduated with a college degree, I mean, they're happy, they're celebrating, but of course, some people, they want more. They want to achieve more in their life. So if you get your master's or your PhD, then you're going to think, wow, I can achieve so much more because of this achievement. So this is really towards like personal happiness and personal development. Again, just boosting up your ego. So I was very happy that, you know, I graduated college, but I was even happier that I actually graduated with my master's. You just feel like more accomplished because you were able to achieve something that you really thought was really difficult, but you know, you somehow survived. And this not only affects you, so I mean, you have your own personal boost in happiness, you're happy with what you achieved. Other people will start to look at you and say, oh, this guy achieved a lot, you know. Coming into my job, when I told them that I got my master's, and everyone else who didn't have their master's, they were like, wow, this guy, he must be really smart. So in a way, they look up to me, even though I'm younger than them, and even though I have like less experience than them, they still look up to me and they think that I'm very well knowledge. But that's probably not the case because I value experience more so than like a piece of paper that says masters. That's just my personal opinion though. The next advantage of having a masters is that there's better opportunity for growth. So this does go in hand with like more prestige. So the more prestige and the more value and you know the more ego that you have the more likely people are going to look at you, look up to you and say, wow, this guy is really smart. So they're probably more likely going to give you a promotion. So going back again, most people that I know who are like managers or supervisors, they have like higher education than just their bachelors. So that could lead to like more experience in the long run. And it's just really a big snowball effect. Rarely have I ever seen a supervisor with just their bachelors. And if that is the case, then that means they've had their bachelors, but they've been working for that company for like 10, 20 years. 
So that means in order for them to get that position, they had to have had traded off their work experience for like the time spent at school. And there is no like clear definition between how much experience you need in order to get a supervisor position that I don't know myself. But the bottom line is that if you have your master's, you have more opportunity for growth because you're probably well acquainted with other people and people look up to you. And lastly, the advantage to having a master's is that you have more flexibility. So what I mean by that is you're probably going to have more opportunities compared to someone with lower education. So this sort of goes back to having more opportunities. So you're more flexible, that means you have more opportunities for growth. So you can be promoted to a manager or you can actually be promoted to like a different field because you're more knowledgeable and you have more skills. So that means you're probably able to pick up some new skills on a different field. So you can probably transfer to a different position if you wanted to. So going from like environmental engineer to a civil engineer, I mean, that switch might be easier. Maybe because you picked up some of those skills when you talk to those civil engineers. So now you have like more connections and then you have more skills and so now it's just easier to transfer overall. I know it's pretty bad to say, but because you are higher positioned, you have more connections. People look up to you, so people sort of favor you. So you might be one manager of one project, but then you're gonna be talking and communicating with some other project manager. Now you guys are friends. Let's say he offers you some other position that pays higher. Now look at that, you had that connection, and it's because you had that master's degree that you were able to have and build this connection, learn new skills, and so on, all because you were sort of given the opportunity in the first place. So let's say as a manager, for example, you, only you had that opportunity, while everyone else underneath you, whether your coworkers, they didn't have the opportunity to talk to that manager because, you know, maybe they weren't on the same playing field. So in a way, it is sort of messed up because you're favoritized, but, I mean, that's just how it is. But all these advantages, this is just something that I picked up and I noticed, but it doesn't mean that it's going to happen to every single position who has a master's. So do take this with a grain of salt. Be very cautious, be very weary before you actually go into this. Again, don't just waste your money, waste your time trying to get a master's, thinking that all these good things will actually happen to you. That's not always the case, especially with environmental engineering or engineering or any field in general. So I hope that this video helped you guys and made you realize some of the advantages that you did not realize of having a master's. But again, that being said, don't just jump into it because you heard all these good things about it. Personally, all my coworkers do not have their masters. It is just me. Everyone else just has their bachelors in environmental engineering. I don't think that I personally have like a big pay advantage compared to my other coworkers who have their bachelors. It's because they've been working there for years, so through experience and probably maybe through like um, incremental pay increases that they've increased their pay, but I don't think that I have like a big gigantic chunk saying, oh, because he has his master's, we should give him like a $10,000 lump sum increase compared to everyone else. But again, that is just my personal experience for my current position. So that may be different for you. So if maybe, for example, you're like a computer engineer and you have your bachelor's and you're like competing against someone who has their master's in computer engineering, more than likely that master's might help the other person have a much higher pay scale than you. But it is all very field specific and very company specific. So again, don't take my word and say that this is completely true. Alright, so if you have any other general questions that you'd like to hear me answer, then go ahead and leave a comment down below. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.